Hi, this is Ty Hadarali. I'm a plaintiff's lawyer in New Jersey and New York. We concentrated in employment law. So some exciting news from uh, Starbucks that doesn't have anything to do with coffee. So just uh, earlier this month, uh, workers at a Buffalo location at Starbucks became the first co corporately owned Starbucks location in the United States to unionize. Uh, 15,000 locations in the United States and uh, the first just occurred earlier this month. So what does this mean? Uh, well, let's kind of take a look back and maybe even a look at where trade unions are today. What, what is a trade union? What is a labor organization? A labor organization is basically a group that's formed to advocate for better wages, quality of life, conditions of employees, and collectively represent employees in a workplace. Uh, currently in the country today, uh, about 10% of the workforce is unionized, 10.8% of Americans to be exact. Uh, a huge decline from where it was decades ago when in excess of 20% of the workforce was unionized. Um, and let's go even further back than that because uh, unions in this country is about as, um, it's about as American as American pie is uh, because it goes back to the colonial days. Uh, in fact, uh, in their English law, it's illegal for employees uh, to group together, to come together, to advocate for uh, better wages. It was considered uh, treason, actually. And so in the United States, uh, first the courts had to deal with the issue of, is it even legal uh, to organize? And there were some cases that occurred in the 19th century, uh, really culminated in Commonwealth versus Hunt, uh, which was, and there was a, a progeny of other cases as well, that basically held the proposition that yes, it is uh, valid, it is uh, legal to unionize in this country. Uh, what happened after that was the great upheaval, a slew of other events where uh, workers uh, start to advocate for, uh, for better pay, better rights, etc. And then came uh, the 1930s, where there was something called the yellow dog contracts. And basically a yellow dog contract was a contract that said, it's illegal for you to join a union. And the Supreme Court shockingly uh, upheld that uh, contract as constitutional. Well, uh, we had a president at the time, President Roosevelt, who was not too happy with that decision by the Supreme Court. And he threatened to uh, pack the court to overturn that decision. And shockingly enough, uh, 1937, the court reconsiders its decision and this declares it is unconstitutional to have such yellow dog contracts. So out of this, um, you get the slew of other uh, laws that surround uh, trade unions and really culminates in the NLRA, the National Labor Relations Act of 1935, uh, which uh, there have been attempts to amend the statute, but uh, it's still good uh, today in its current form, but 70 years old. Uh, there's the Taft-Hartley Act as well that uh, amended it, but other than that, there's been no amendments to the NLRA. Uh, so where are we today in this country? Uh, we have, you know, scholars are looking very closely at what happened in Buffalo with the uh, Starbucks shop, and they believe it's just a drop in the bucket of what will come next, because in the country today, approximately I believe it's 68% of Americans who were polled recently uh, advocate for uh, labor unions um, to protect their rights. And a lot of this emanates from concerns about COVID and what uh, companies are doing to protect employees. This is Ty Hyderali. Be safe and be well.